So welcome everyone. Today we are talking about what it takes to become a certified leadership coach. And this is a short and sweet webinar. I'm going to provide a lot of information um, and then open up some time for questions. So a little bit about me. I am a master certified coach. I started coaching back in 2015 uh, and recently got my master certified credential with the International Coaching Federation, went through that whole process. Um, and I've been working a lot with companies and with managers specifically within organizations uh, as well as business owners. And I started seeing some themes emerge that were very different from when I started coaching back in 2015. Um, specifically in the last year or two, obviously things have changed a lot in the world and the needs of people have changed a lot in the world. And I wanted to create something that addressed those needs and also advanced us to be better prepared for the future. Um, because we can keep doing what we know about what needs to be taken care of, but if we're not um, building the skills for the future, then we're kind of on our heels and reactive. So I wanted to create a more proactive and responsive program that equips coaches in a different way. So here's the current situation. Uh, I looked into some stats about first-time managers. So 20%, 20 so one in five are doing a bad job in the eyes of the people that work for them. And the reason that I looked at first-time managers is because most times when you step into a new role, that's the time that you are most equipped with skills, when you're most equipped with training so that you have uh, the information that you need. And what happens is from the time that you step into that role to the time that you are in it for three to five years, you're not necessarily getting new skills beyond that. And then it's just assumed that you know what you're doing and then we're not really addressing it. Uh, so beyond that, 26% of first-time managers didn't feel like they were ready. So they don't feel like they're ready and their team is like, yeah, you weren't ready. You're not doing a very good job. <laughs> so uh, that's one in five. And that's the people that are actually speaking up about it. So what's happening is that 60% of them are not receiving training. So it's just not happening. Um, and then they're not doing a good job. And then they're feeling overwhelmed and underprepared, which is exactly what we're seeing with our clients. So we're seeing all this build up, and then we have this feeling of being ineffective. So half of managers that are out there are being rated as ineffective. And yet the expectation is that managers are going to serve as coaches. There was a uh, report that came out from the Association of Talent Development, this like, 50% or more were expected to serve as coaches, yet most are never given the training and they are left with kind of this emotional burden of their team. And they're feeling like I can't be useful in this or I'm feeling like I have to shoulder the weight and I'm not doing a good job. So all of this kind of compounds into not feeling super confident about what you're doing. And then it ripples out and impacts many people. And I'll talk about that statistic. What it really is about is this transition from VUCA to Bonnie. And if you've never seen this acronym, you are not alone. <laughs> I usually spend most of my time teaching people about these concepts because it helps to better understand our environment and our individual experience. So VUCA was kind of created during the 1980s. Uh, it was shaped by the Cold War, this kind of feeling of being volatile. So things are up and down. Um, there's not a gradual change. It's kind of very erratic and abrupt. Uh, things are feeling very uncertain. So you don't know where they're going to go. You're not sure what's going to happen. Um, and they're complex. So there's systems that are kind of layered on each other. Um, it's not very simple, but that your impacts ripple out and impact other people. And then it's ambiguous. So when things are vague, you don't really know what specifics you're tying into. And so we had sort of a handle about what VUCA was. And we had leaders who were able to create certainty, who were able to kind of see the waves of volatility and find that midline. And so their leadership skills were based on that model. And now from 2020 on, and this even was getting worked on prior to the pandemic, this was more about uh, global climate change and diasporas and things that happen. We started seeing this emerge in people. So individual employees and environments. So it's looking at kind of this brittleness, this fragility in people that, you know, things that typically they could just let roll off their back are now setting them off. They're very reactive. 
Uh, then this like anxiety of like, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm very wound up. I'm not feeling in control of things because things seem nonlinear. So before when we had VUCA, we could see this and this and this. It was very cyclical. And now we're seeing these things that are beyond the horizon that we've never anticipated before, which also filters into incomprehensible. So if you think about the last three years, even before that, this feeling of Bonnie was kind of sitting under the surface and wasn't getting it addressed. And so now when we have all of this compounded, individuals need a different leader to show up to support this. So this is like beyond just productivity, beyond just motivation. This is about the well-being and wholeness of the person. So not like we need to know every minutiae detail, but how do we address the individual experience while they're in the workplace? And this is where a lot of companies are getting tripped up. This is where a lot of leaders and managers are feeling overwhelmed because they're having this their own experience in bonding, and then they don't know how to show up for other people. Does that ring a bell? Does that sound familiar? So how we used to train leaner, leaders in this kind of VUCA world was that there was some mentorship. Like we might've gotten it in school. We might've had it in sports. We might've had some sort of mentorship in uh, older generations. Maybe we got some training. There might've been, you know, a, uh, you know, a workshop here and there or a training that we would do, or maybe we would get an expert to come in and do a workshop um, internally. Um, so there was some training and then we learned mainly from osmosis. So maybe we had a, an amazing leader that we emulated that we thought was great, or we saw certain things that worked or that we respected. So in the office or when we were out and about at conferences and different spaces, we could say, wow, like that's what I want to pick up on. And we would just naturally kind of absorb it. And then there was this kind of like, we're going to figure it out as we go. So you could kind of just like duct tape things together and then learn from it what worked, what didn't work, or ask for feedback and apply that. And so how we used to train leaders back then used to work for some people. And what we've realized is it no longer works now because we're in hybrid situations. People are way over scheduled. The amount of Zoom meetings, that's why I kept this to 30 minutes because our schedules are crazy. Um, and we're not getting those interactions with people that we normally had. So those things that we used to rely on as kind of these um, organic or things that just naturally happen aren't there anymore. So we're not getting the mentorship. We're not getting the training. And the trainings that do exist aren't factoring in Bonnie, aren't factoring in a lot of the new trends and the new experiences that people are having. So people are feeling like, that's not relevant to me. That That's not speaking to my experience. Or it's using this kind of ideal model of like, just figure it out. It'll be fine. Like you've got nothing to worry about. And then we're not having those like water cooler moments. We're not having osmosis. And people don't feel safe just figuring it out. There's a huge amount of risk, especially when you have a retraction in an economy. People feel risky making, you know, new, new moves and they don't feel like they have the safety net. So there's that lack of psychological safety that is existing now more than ever. So what do we do with that? What we're seeing in our clients is that they're asking for upskilling, meaning they want additional skills added so that they can better serve and support their employees. They want the training. They want the support. So what happens if you don't know if you're going to make the wrong move? Or let's say you stepped in it or you, you said something that you're like, oh, no, I don't think that went well. Where do you go to support? People don't feel like HR is that anymore, that, that it ever was really. But HR now is doing kind of the dirty work of cleaning out um, you know, employees, giving them pink slips if it doesn't work out or retracting their own workforce. And specifically, they're asking for advanced certification. So there isn't necessarily even the time and space to go back to school, to do a full you know, semester or to go back to get a master's or anything beyond that. But they want to have something that signals I'm invested in this, I'm invested in this way of being, um, and I also want my employer to co-invest with me. So these four things have been emerging in the last couple of years, big time in our clients. So this is from a website called Quantic. They have all of these future leadership skills needed in 2030. And believe me, I wasn't going looking for the statistic. I was like, hey, if coaching's in there, great. Um, and it was the first thing listed because 
it is one of the key skills that allows you to make all of these other skills possible. So it allows you to create spaces for innovation, to be adaptable, to be flexible, to collaborate, to have emotional intelligence, to negotiate, to plan for projects and beyond. Like, believe me, like the trickle down effect is huge. Um, and I say this um, because I'm not just the president, I'm a client. Um, coaching is probably the single most pivotal thing that I did in my career that allowed me to open up and, and better serve the companies that I was working with and the people I was working with. So the cases for coaching, it makes people who are handling uncertain situations in those body environments better able to serve not just themselves, but the people that they're supporting and their companies. There's a need for leaders as coaches. We know this. There's already the expectation. There's a need for specialized body training. People need to know the experiences so that they're aware and can support. There is a need for ongoing support beyond just a training. And people want the credentialing as a leadership coach. They want people to know, I've gone through this. I know what I'm doing. Let me take it on. What is the key here is the access. Because coaching has been around for decades, um, but it's only been reserved for either the C-suite or people who have been labeled as problematic. It's been seen as kind of this like performance adjustment technique. So 75% of executives value coaching, but only 24% of them have it in the budget. So we've got a discrepancy of 50% there. So they know it's important, but they're not investing. And then 20, 22% of the people that were surveyed here believe that all employees in their organization have an equal opportunity to receive coaching. That's a huge discrepancy. So 78% of their companies don't have access to coaching for their employees. So that's big capacity opportunity there, as well as the discrepancy. So the opportunity here is if we want to better support our employees, we have to make coaching available. Now, people think coaching is a huge investment, and it is uh, because there's high value in it. There's training in it, but there's an opportunity to invest in internal coaches. And so the companies that have done this have seen huge differences in their performance. So you talk about psychological safety as the number one factor in high performing organizations. Coaching is one of those supporting factors that support psychological safety. So imagine what could happen if that missing 78% had access to coaching. Where do people go when they're trying to soundboard? Where do they go when they're trying to um, think beyond reactivity? How do they start to process collaboration because what we were trained to do doesn't work, but we're also not replacing it with things that work for people in working in these complex environments in working in this ambiguity and working with this fragility and incomprehensibility. So imagine if that 50% that wasn't investing turned it into a full-on investment. The ROI is eight to 10 X when people invest in their people, especially with coaching. It's huge. And I mean, I could give you the numbers of what it costs to replace people. We already have a massive talent gap worldwide because people are leaving to go start their own firms. And we've had a massive drop off in population, by the way. So if we want to have a better outcome, we have to do things differently. And I think this is one of those key things that we start to look at being certified leadership coaches. Internally, we become those positive agents for change within organizations. Remember I told you the impacts of a manager? 70% of a team member's engagement is directly related to their manager, 70%. So if you've got a great manager, you're probably going to have amazing engagement. You're gonna stay, you're gonna have a positive trickle out effect. But imagine if you have someone who has not keyed up into those key coaching skills and management skills. 70% is usually going to be negatively impacted and that's going to trickle out because it's not just a one-to-one -one interaction, it's a domino effect. Meaning you can have a domino effect of positive change by kind of implanting these positive change agents with coaching skills. Once we kind of address that manager as that center of influence, we see all these other benefits showing up. So the increased engagement, strengthening individual team members and their skills, collaborating, communicating, developing potential leaders, because that is one of the huge things, having people ready 
leader ready to take on those new projects to move up when people do leave, because inevitably that's going to happen. So it allows us to develop them even faster because they have this amazing foundation and it allows them to better problem solve because we're not in reactive mode. We can anticipate it. We can see the cycles. We can look at what's most important as an organization. What are things that are just kind of distractions that we don't need to pay attention to? Where do we need to double down and invest our energy? And obviously the positive leadership strategies that come from it. I mean, I, I could keep going on these benefits, but you get the point. You hear there's a process to becoming a certified leadership coach. As a master certified coach, I am credentialed through the International Coach Federation. And so what I've decided to do is talk about all those things that I mentioned before and incorporate them into a leadership training. So this would be the inaugural cohort uh, that goes through the process of getting credentialed through ICF. It includes 60 hours of virtual and in-person training. Um, I'm not set yet on the in-person. We could do a transformation weekend that's virtual. I know we've got some people uh, outside of the US on today's uh, webinar. So it includes a three-day transformation weekend. So that's 10 hours each day. Um, there's 12 peer coaching hours. So you're coaching people and being coached through the process. And then there's 10 mentor coaching hours. So uh, my, my team, uh, all credentialed through ICF, we review your um, coaching recordings and give you real time tips and tricks and hacks of like, here's how you can tighten that up. And all of our trainings are through this lens of the core competencies because coaching works because they have eight core competencies that help to leverage your power as a coach and allow the coachee to emerge with their own solutions. So in addition to that, we also do six coach learning labs where you're doing real-time coaching and getting real-time feedback in addition to learning all these skills. So we wanted to cut the fluff. We wanted to get down to the brass tacks and make sure that you're getting all the learning that you need in order to feel equipped. We want to be bringing this into companies so that you have those certified coaches internally that can support your team, um, whether they're coaching. And we'll, we'll go into kind of the, the role of a coach versus the role of a manager uh, within the trainings. And we can actually do it during our learning session. Um, but we wanted to give people a ready-made, situational, uh, real world, like let's, let's be effective and get into motion and momentum. So on the 21st of January, we are doing an information session where we'll answer every question imaginable because people have them um, about this about what's coming up. Um, and so there's all the information that you need uh, at spitfirecoach.com slash coach training. Um, and so it's $21.97 for that four month program, includes everything. And then once we go through our approval process with ICF, then you will be eligible to apply for your ACC or associate coaching credential. And you'll get a certificate as a certified leadership coach. Okay. Well, thanks so much everyone. And if I don't see you or hear from you before, happy new year, I'll see you next year hopefully on the 21st and take care. Thanks so much for tuning in.